Hey everyone, what is up? If you're new here, I'm Mackenzie, a fifth grade teacher in Northern California, sharing new teacher tips every week. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing six more Jamboard games and activities that you can play with your students. Now, these would work great as morning meeting activities, or if you have transitioned to a hybrid model and you have students that are in the classroom and virtual, Jamboard is just such a great tool to get your students collaborating together and still having those times to build community with each other. If you're new to using Jamboard, I do have an entire Jamboard playlist on my channel, so be sure to check that out for some more ideas. And if you do enjoy this content, please give this video a thumbs up so it can reach even more teachers, and let's get into it. The first idea is to create scratch and reveal activities on Jamboard. So to create these scratch and reveal activities, any image that you add to the Jamboard, you can then use the pen tool to draw over it and then students use the eraser tool to erase part of it to reveal whatever's underneath. I know one fun activity to do at the end of the school year is to fill balloons as a countdown to the end of the year. And whenever you pop a balloon, it will reveal a special activity that you get to do that day or the VIP student of the day. So you can create a version of this on Jamboard for the balloon example, I have that inserted as a background and then I would add the prize or the VIP student or any image that I want onto the balloon and then use the pen tool to color directly over it. Then when it's time for a student to scratch and reveal it, they're going to use that eraser tool to reveal what's underneath. So instead of popping the balloons, they're actually using that eraser tool to reveal the mystery prize. Another fun way to use the scratch and reveal would be to create a review game for your students. So this is one example where I fill the Jamboard filled with sticky notes that have different amounts of points on them. Some have two points, some have minus three points. So for this game, I would divide my class into two teams and then I ask them a review question. If they get it correct, they get to choose a sticky note that they can scratch and reveal the amount of points for their team. Making these scratch and reveal activities just add that level of mystery that makes the game that much more exciting for your students. So this next activity is super fun and is to have your students work together on a puzzle. So if you go to the website, the jigsawpuzzles.com, there's actually so many puzzles that have already been created, but I'm going to show you how to actually upload your own image so you can really choose any image that you want for your class. So I have my class photo here from Pixin and I want to turn it into a puzzle using that jigsaw website. I'm going to download the photo and put it into a Google slide. On Google Slides, I'm going to use the standard dimensions. I've just found that works best for the puzzle website. And then I just added some text and now I'm going to download this as an image. On the Jigsaw Puzzles website, I'm going to click My Puzzles and then click Make a Puzzle. And then just drag and drop my custom photo that I just made. I can change the title and click Make Puzzle. For now, I'll click Leave Unchanged and then it will take you to your library of puzzles. This is where you can select what type of puzzle you want and how many pieces. For now, I'll select 20 piece classic. And now your picture is a jigsaw puzzle. Now to put this on Jamboard, I'm going to copy and paste each individual puzzle piece just so that my students can actually collaborate together on that Jamboard. Once I have copy and pasted each puzzle piece, I'll spread them all out on the Jamboard, and then I am going to have my students work in groups, so I'm going to duplicate the slide so I have multiple copies for them to work on. And now it's all ready for my students. Now my students can actually work together on that Jamboard and build that puzzle together. Now I know this does take time, but it's totally worth it. I recommend making a master copy of all of your puzzles so you can just use whatever one you want for your class that day. The third activity is to have your students work together to complete a word search. So to create a word search, really use any of those online word search makers. I found one just by looking it up on Google. So I am using the website A to Z teacher stuff. Now I can add a title, insert the words. So I really like using just a personalized word search with my students' names, or you can maybe use it for vocabulary, whatever you would normally make a word search for. And then you can choose your font, really customize your settings, play around with the options. Now under grid style is where you can choose the shape of your word search. I really like the heart. I use that one during Valentine's Day, so you can definitely have fun with this. Now I'm going to take a screenshot of the word search and insert it as a background image on Jamboard. Now my students can actually use the highlighter tool to highlight and find the words just like they normally would in a word search activity. Now I do recommend teaching your students how to hold down shift to make a straight line just to make it a little easier to navigate that word search. 
Now your students can work together to actually highlight and find those words. Again, I really like using these activities as teamwork. And so you could have your whole class work on the same word search or put them in breakout rooms so they can work in teams to try to complete it. The fourth activity is to have your students play board games together. So I know my students on rainy days would always love to play board games during recess. And you can still have your students play similar games using Jamboard. So these are just a few examples. The possibilities really are endless here. For example, I have inserted a checkers board background and then just created the checker pieces using that shape tool. So now students can actually play with another partner while they're on that same jam board together and play checkers together. This also works for Connect Four. I have a multiplication version of this that I mentioned in my Jamboard math games video, but this is just the classic Connect Four game. I created the template just on a Google slide, inserted that as a background, and then created those game pieces using that shape tool again. Now students can take turns and play Connect Four. That's another fun way you can do a review game as a whole class too. For every question that a team gets right, then they can add one to the Connect Four board. There's really so many ways that you can play that game. You could also create your own board game in Google Slides and insert that as a background image. You can insert a game board image of your own, maybe Candyland or Sorry, where you actually insert that as a background, add some playing pieces using the image tool or the shape tool, and then your students can actually play together. These board games are definitely a great way just to have your students have fun together and build community that way. This fifth game is Build It. For this game on the Jamboard, you're just going to add a stack of blank sticky notes and then tell your students an object or an animal that they need to build. So students work in teams and so if you're virtual, they'll be in their breakout rooms and they'll each be assigned their own Jamboard slide to work together. Then I'm going to tell them either an animal or an object that they have to recreate only using those sticky notes. It is so much fun to see what they come up with. They get really creative and actually need to communicate with each other to create their design. Another option to play this game would be to use those pattern blocks or tangrams to have your students do a similar game where you could upload images of pattern blocks or of the tangrams onto the Jamboard and then your students can use that to build objects and shapes together. The sixth game is Unscramble. So for this game, I think of a word and then I use one sticky note for each letter in that word and mix them all up. The students then work in teams to make as many words as they can using those letters. Depending on how many letters are in each word, that is worth a certain amount of points. If they are the first team to guess the big word, which uses all of the letters, then that is worth an extra 10 points to their score. I usually like to set a timer for about five minutes for my students to actually play this game, and then we add up their points to see who wins. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, just a quick reminder to give this video a thumbs up, and please consider subscribing for all my newest teacher tips, and I hope to See you again next week.